Hey everyone, welcome back to Chasing Adventure. Thank you for tuning in. Today we are gonna talk about budget overland build, my Toyota Sequoia. I absolutely love it. It's one of the best vehicles I've had. Let's get in the action. I'll show you some mods. want to talk about the basics of the Toyota Sequoia that I have. I have a 2003 limited model Toyota Sequoia. It's got the 4.7 liter V8 engine under the hood. It's what all the Land Cruisers have. Um, it, it goes 2 million miles, hopefully. Um, this one right now has over 280,000 miles on it. Um, just last May, almost a year ago now, I drove around the country for 10,000 miles and no problems whatsoever. Absolutely loved it. Um, I do want to start off with some of the extra mods though and just kind of starting off the first thing that you can see is this big gray bumper. So this is our coastal off-road front bumper. If you have seen my last video, I have talked about it, I didn't discuss it too much. There is a video that um, I've posted where we put the, put the whole bumper together, um, but it is a 36 piece kit that gets flat pack shipped straight to your door from coastal off-road in British Columbia um, it's been fantastic I love it it does need to come off and needs to be repainted it's a little faded at the moment but it looks good um, the next thing we have are some lights so these are just some cheap pods I picked up at um, I want to say advanced auto and then same with the light bar here add some credit there and said you know what I'm just gonna go get some some lights for this thing they work they all still work they work fine these outer ones here are connected to my fog lights and the inner ones are connected to a switch that I have on the dash um, next thing we have our X bull winch so I don't use this a ton if you're using it a ton you know you might be on some tough tracks um, but this is just a, a cheaper insurance for me. If I'm out on the trail and I get stuck, I don't have anybody around, I'm able to get out. It's worked a charm so far. Um, it is a Chinese brand. I, I've risked it for the biscuit and it hasn't let me down yet. So moving on over here, let's just talk about wheel and tire setup and I'll talk about lift as well. So wheel and tire setup, we have the black rhino hard ally wheels here in the gray i don't remember exactly what model it is i'll put the link down below for these and then i've got the ko2 the, the bfg ko2 all terrains um, and these are i want to say 285 yeah 285 75 17s which come out to like a 32.9 i believe maybe a little more than that um, so they're pretty big they're definitely heavy you can feel it when you drive they're pretty dang heavy um, now to fit these under there, all of this was done before I bought the vehicle. And I do like to do things myself, but this guy was just trying to get out of his Sequoia, needed the money, so we went and bought it. But under it, we've got two and a half inch adjustable Bilsteins. And we've got Dobinson Springs here that are super stiff. I don't know the rating on those. And then we've got uh, JVC adjustable upper control arms as well. Now we have had to replace the lower ball joints, which is always recommended in these vehicles. They, they do fail. Um, we have replaced those before they failed, which is good. Other than that though, haven't replaced anything suspension wise, knock on wood. But that is kind of the, the base model on the ground, what you can see on the outside. And from that, we're just gonna kind of move to the inside about like where we sleep, how we eat, all the compartments and all the good stuff. And also, before we go, on the roof, there used to be a roof rack and an awning and a storage box and all that. I have taken that off. I'm not in travel mode at the moment, but that will go back on eventually. I love my awning and I love that storage box that I have up there. So. That stuff will definitely be on. But at the moment, it's off if you're wondering where it is. So we moved to the back of the vehicle now. And the last time I did one of these videos, I had a U-Haul bike rack. It did the trick, but over the course of that trip, the reducer bolt in the hitch had snapped in half. We had to bunch it up to the roof rack, all sorts of stuff to just get home. And we decided to get a different one. This is the Rocky Mount 
bike rack that so far is absolutely awesome it's um now it is expensive but i'll show you why in a second so you've got all these locking pins and this came from the factory a little bit which i don't like um, but that's okay because it'll still fold up fold down and then it also folds down one more time so that you can open up the back hatch but the real reason that i love this is that once you unscrew it from here pop that little pin and then it swings out for you and now you're free to do whatever that you need here without the bikes in the way that is a huge game changer we had to take the bikes on and off the whole time with my last bike rack because it just wouldn't get out of the way so that right there is such a lifesaver so moving on to the inside of the vehicle this is where I sleep or have slept before this is a full platform that we built for the bed now if you saw my last video there was a mattress in here with sleeping bags and all sorts of stuff but I'm not in traveling mode at the moment like I said so there's nothing in here right now and budget wise we use premium white plywood and this was a year ago so it was a little bit cheaper than it is now but you could definitely do this a cheaper a cheaper way uh, but all in all this probably cost five to six hundred dollars to completely build with screws wood glue everything um, so you could probably do it cheaper I know there's people out there that do it cheaper than I did it but I wanted to be very professional and stand the the test of time so to show you what's in these drawers right here on this side we've got this is our tool drawer I've got it sectioned off into three different compartments and these are four foot drawers so there's a four foot box in here where this just ends and this first section is kind of like the necessity section tire plug kit axe you know suspension gauge all sorts of stuff and then the second compartment is kind of things that we need at camp. There's a pan and a rack in here to go over the fire. Paper towels, bug spray, and then stuff for inside the vehicle or spares box here in the, in the back. These are things that we don't need pronto. So, and again, all the gear, you're going to get wrapped up in gear. But there is budget stuff out there um, that you can get. You don't have to get all of the nicest gear. I definitely don't have the nicest gear. Most of this stuff is like Walmart stuff and it doesn't cost a lot. I can go over a full gear video um, in the next video if that's what y'all want to see. If that's what you want to see, drop a comment down below, like this video, and I'll make sure to fit in a full gear video on all the gear that I have for overlanding. This side of our drawer system this is when I was on my trip this was the closet now right now it's just kind of set up as a willy-nilly storage stuff right here is all my mountain biking stuff we've got my shoes knee pads shirt um, GoPro case there's another rag I think in here and then over here we've just got a lock and then some spray and lube and stuff and a fanny pack and all that good stuff but this was the closet I did have a buddy stay with me for a little bit so it was like my side and his side and we were able to fit two two and a half weeks worth of clothes in here rolled up packed tight and slammed in here um, so this was really nice to have I am thinking about changing this so if you have any ideas on where to you know put a closet or what kind of closet you use or what you do for storing your clothes in your overland vehicle Drop it in the comments, please. Um, but I'm thinking about changing this maybe to that three compartment system and changing it up a little bit. I haven't really decided yet. So those are the drawers in the back. Um, I do want to show you a couple other things right here. And it's not nighttime, but you should still be able to see. Um, I've got some lights right here, which are on a switch. Some LED lights, they do attract bugs. 
it was an afterthought. I didn't even think about it attracting bugs, but they definitely do. So be weary if you're gonna do that. Sometimes you just gotta hit them and it'll <laughs> pop back on. Um, so there is a video that I've posted on how we did this, how we ran it, and go check it out. So, all right, so we have moved over. This is the driver side of the back seat and the platform. So in the last video, you saw a fridge here and I do have a portable refrigerator that I keep right here behind the seat. There's an outline for it right here where I drew it up and it straps down to these little clips and that fridge I think cost, I had some randomly had like a $150 gift card on Amazon and I think it's like 400 bucks total without the gift card but I got it for like $250 and I bought it like right on the spot and it's been fantastic. Um, it's not in here right now. Whenever we go travel again, it's a necessity. I, it, it plugs right into my car and then into my um, secondary battery when I'm not using the car. And it was, it was a game changer when I was traveling a lot. So highly recommend a fridge. This one didn't cost too much. There's a lot out there that cost an arm and a leg. Just do some research on that and make sure you, if you are building an overland rig, you can use a cooler or a cheap fridge. Now, this is also the kitchen. So these are our little compartments. I've used this as a cutting board and a sandwich board and all sorts of stuff. Um, I like that they're removable. Now this is like the pantry slash kitchen. So cutting board and all sorts of things. Um, this is where I keep my pots and pans, my percolator, my coffee stuff, my knives, um, and all my food, all my dry food. Um, again, I keep other food in the fridge where it belongs. And there's not much I'm gonna change about this. I could, and I have thought, if you think this is a good idea, recommend it to me. I have thought about moving the kitchen fully to the back and building a table back there like some other people have and then making this a closet and storing clothes. Let me know if you think that's a good idea. Um, also, budget wise, food can get expensive on the road. So I recommend stocking up at your local grocery store before you leave or wherever you're going, eating a bunch of sandwiches that saved me a lot of money or cooking in bulk at the camp and then being able to save that. Um, it's definitely going to help you save money on this budget over land build. All right, we moved over to the passenger side of the vehicle now and the platform. And this side has a little bit bigger storage compartment because I don't have anything that goes here. Um, and also one other thing that I would change is I know the fridge sits here but what I would change is I would have this cut here and have this be able to flip up and put stuff under there without having to actually physically reach under. Um, that would be a lot helpful. I noticed that like, I don't know, a day into the trip that I did wrong, if you will. But here's another storage compartment and another sandwich tray if you want it to be. Um, this one just has miscellaneous storage. That's what I've always called it is miscellaneous storage. And in here, I just keep, you know, toilet paper, batteries, first aid kit, a lot of camera, camera equipment. Um, right now, I've got extra boots in here. I keep maps in here. There's a big atlas under here. Um, there's some binoculars, all that good stuff. It's just a miscellaneous drawer where I can keep all these things. Um, I might section it out a little bit when I do you know, maybe redo some things where I can say, hey, this is all my camera gear. This is all binoculars. This is you know, extra toilet paper, toiletries, whatever it is. Um, it's all in this drawer. So really like having this because I can just kind of throw anything in anything I want in here. Um, again, don't go crazy with the camera gear or anything like that. My whole trip last year was filmed on a GoPro and an iPhone. Um, and I just had a couple different mounts and bags and stuff that I, I was able to store in here. But again, we're trying to keep it budget and keep it cheaper. 
Um, but <clears throat> that's what I keep in there. It's just miscellaneous things. So all in all, price-wise, for a budget overland build, I spent just under $9,000 to do this whole build. Um, the car, $6,000. We're lucky to find it at that price. It was right before everything skyrocketed. Uh, bumper, winch, and lights all together was probably 1100 bucks, And then the wood stuff in the back was probably, I just said 600 And then um, awning, 150 roof box, 125 And then that fridge, um, let me just go ahead and add another 250 because I forgot to add the fridge. So we're still at 8925 for an overland vehicle. Um, also, bike rack on the back, about $650. So, if you think you can't do overlanding on a budget, you've gotta have a $55,000 Jeep or whatever it is, new Forerunner, that is just not the case. Find something that fits in your budget that you like and you'll be able to get it done. Um, this was under $10,000 for me and I was able to travel the full country 10,000 miles last year. So, get you a budget overland vehicle. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. If you thought it was insightful or you got anything from it, please drop a like, comment on it, comment some new ideas for me to do on some changes, and ask questions about what things cost if you missed it or if I didn't say anything. One last thing. Go chase your adventure. Thanks.